Hello everyone. As you may have noticed, I'm moving to a semesterly video update to augment my monthly written reports to the Senate Teaching and Learning Policy Committee, all of which are available for your review on my webpage. Now that we've reached the end of the 2023-24 Senate and Academic Year, I wanted to share four important updates and reminders with you. First, I want to make sure you are all aware that CPI is currently looking for feedback from Brock's educators including faculty, professional librarians, instructors, TAs, markers, graders, lab demonstrators, and more to help inform our educational development programming over the next year. As you will know, in response to feedback from the community, we organized a series of webinars over the past year, all concerning the question of how to approach assessment in an age of generative artificial intelligence. Recordings from all seven of these sessions are available for your viewing on CPI's website now. And while we have heard from some of you about some of your current challenges, student engagement as an example, we have designed a brief survey through which you can share any feedback that you may have for us, whether it concerns desired areas of focus, preferred modalities, scheduling of sessions, or really anything else. The survey will remain open for the entire month of June. Second, I want to remind you of the opportunity to join our course Redesign Institute this will take place on August 20th and 21st this year. And during this two-day event, participants will have the opportunity to engage in workshops on learning outcomes and alignment, assessment and activity design, using Brightspace, and of course, accessible pedagogy. Time will also be dedicated to working on designing or redesigning elements of your course. Registration for the Course Redesign Institute is now open on Experience BU. Third, I want to make sure that you are all aware that Senate has now approved a set of changes to the university policy on undergraduate student evaluation. This update will soon be reflected in the faculty handbook, and it includes changes such as clarification and consolidation of the various requirements to be communicated to students at the beginning of each course, the use of much more precise language, for example, that fair evaluations are those that are both reliable and valid, and necessary updates to reflect our expanded set of course delivery modes. Two categories of revisions that I would especially like to draw your attention to are those that concern the distribution of final grades and the use of software to assess student work. In the case of the former, it is important to know that a single assessment can no longer account for more than 50% of the final grade, and that with the exception of thesis or independent and directed study courses, the final grade shall reflect grades from no fewer than three assessments. And in the case of the latter, software, the new language stresses that all software used to assess student work must meet the university's privacy, accessibility, and security standards, which is, of course, what happens when educational technology tools go through the official procurement process by CPI and ITS. Paired with this is a clear guidance to instructors that submitting or sharing student work with any artificial intelligence detection services is not institutionally condoned. This guidance was, of course, approved by Senate, and it's very much in line with the strong recommendation of the Provost's Advisory Group on Artificial Intelligence, whose 14 faculty experts have pointed to serious concerns with these tools in terms of their efficacy, ethics, privacy, intellectual property, and data usage. For example, it is already well understood that these tools have a higher rate of false positives and false negatives than initially thought, and that these inaccurate reports disproportionately disadvantage learners for whom English is a subsequent language. Relying on such tools would of course result in the coursework of several thousand Brock University students each year being misidentified as potentially AI generated, and using these tools would institutionalize and condone these algorithmic biases while creating the impression that these tools are reliable and valid while they may be neither. It is important to underscore, however, that this new university policy language concerns the policy on undergraduate student assessment only. Fourth and finally, I want to share my happiness that despite the university's serious budgetary challenges, our co-op career and experiential education team will continue to be staffed in a way that ensures that every faculty benefits from support by our wonderful experiential education coordinators. And furthermore, I'm delighted to share that our experiential education team has just secured approximately $813,000 in funding from SeaWorld Canada. This funding, which actually breaks last year's record of three quarters of a million dollars in SeaWorld funding, will support innovative approaches to experiential learning in areas such as interactive arts and sciences, kinesiology, sports management, applied gerontology, public health, therapeutic recreation, health sciences, and earth sciences, 
in addition to distributing nearly half a million dollars directly to Brock students via a university-wide bursary to, to reduce financial barriers to participating in work integrated learning. I really want to thank our experiential education team and our many faculty partners for their exceptional efforts in securing this funding. Experiential education continues to be a hallmark of the Brock student experience, and I look forward to seeing the outcome of these many projects over the next year. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and wishing you all a very happy Pride Month. Thank you.